Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Culture Academy Distinguished Speaker Series Lecture on the Importance of Culture of, for City Marketing. We are privileged to have Mr. Franz van der Event, Chief Executive Officer of Amsterdam Marketing here with us in Singapore today. He will be sharing with us his insight uh, on how culture plays a prominent role in city marketing. Before we start the lecture, um, may I invite the head of the Culture Academy and director of the Asian Civilization Museum, Dr. Alan Chong, uh, to say a few words. Could we put a round of hands together? Welcome, everyone, um, to our distinguished speaker series, and welcome to Franz uh, van der Avert, CEO of Amsterdam Marketing. Um, by way of an introduction, I should actually make a little personal note. Uh, we actually uh, know each other and our old colleagues from his uh, days at the Rijksmuseum, uh, which is a fantastic institution uh, recently reconstructed and renovated in Amsterdam. I like to think that this is a lesson, that museums are important places of, of innovation, uh, also of uh, spurring the creative talents, not only within the museum field, but, uh, but beyond its walls to, uh, to the world, uh, whether it's a city or a country at large. The remarkable thing about Amsterdam is it's gone through many different phases, and it's really embraced in so many ways its identity but it changes and that identity has evolved and uh, morphed over the years. The slogan such as I Amsterdam is really one of a whole series of plays on the word Amsterdam over the generations. Um, when I was living in Amsterdam in the 80s, one great abbreviation was to make it Adam, so it turned into Adam. It was a sort of quick, easy way of identifying the city internationally um, and, uh, and locally. Um, the, in the United States, Heineken Beer a few years ago used a marketing slogan, uh, um, uh, Amsterdam Good Beer for Heineken, because Heineken is brewed actually in Amsterdam, and sort of a wonderful play on, on irreverence. Um, the most important thing uh, that Franz has really accomplished, I think, over the uh, last few years is to put heritage and cultural identity at the source and the very heart of the marketing of a city. And I think this is very important as an example for the rest of the world. Sometimes a past and heritage becomes a, um, a, a source of unease or, le or at least of discomfort in the pressures of the contemporary world of modern art and so forth. But to actually grab a hold of historical, traditional culture and put it to the fore of a city or a country is something very important. And I think we in Singapore, also uh, a heritage uh, uh, location of great importance, also like Amsterdam, a port city that embraces many different cultures, that trades with the entire world and has brought those cultures to be embedded in the society here is something that we can really, I think, uh, learn uh, from our speaker tonight. So um, I'd like to welcome uh, Franz uh, van der Avert, CEO of Amsterdam Marketing, to, uh, to speak to us now. Thank you, Ellen, for this kind introduction. I can always hire you as an ambassador for Amsterdam here. Um, and then there are two other abbreviations. I just remembered Adam is now also, your Adam from the 70s, 80s, is now a new abbreviation, is the Amsterdam dance and music industry. Because we're very good at the dance music. And, 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 and Heineken has now a new slogan, born in Amsterdam, raised by the world. So you see, it goes on and on. Um, thank you very much for inviting me uh, today for the Academy. It's very exciting to be in the, to be in Singapore. It's my second time. Um, uh, the first time was in the 90s, but I only was here for one day, I think for 10 hours, because I brought Rembrandt paintings from Amsterdam to Melbourne, and the um, exhibition was sponsored by Singapore Airlines. So um, we had to change here, um, which, which was nice. So it's a long time ago, so I'm happy to be back and happy to talk about, uh, about this uh, subject uh, today. Uh, because, as Alan said, um, I think 
Um, I, I come from a cultural background. I used to work, um, as Alan told, in, at the Rijksmuseum um, for 12 years. After that, I went to an exhibition center called the Nieuwe Kerk. And after that, we built a new museum. I built, I, not me, myself, but the whole group of people. We built a museum in Amsterdam called the Hermitage Amsterdam. And so I have a cultural background. And when I changed this job and became uh, the CEO of Amsterdam Marketing, it was kind of fascinating because when I was on the museum side, I always hated the tourist people <laughs> because they, I thought they were stupid and they were uh, uh, superficial and it was all about money and it was not about culture. And then certainly I was on the other side in the chair. So I thought, oh, okay. Um, but on the, actually, I was given the job actually because I came from, I had a cultural background. And as Alan said, culture and heritage is very important in Amsterdam. And I strongly believe in a very, very strong marriage between tourism and culture. And I see it actually when I travel around Europe or the world, I see there always a kind of, there's a kind of, sort of battle uh, between tourism and culture, which is n totally not necessary because um, actually they can't do without each other. They need each other. So I'm trying today to tell you something um, about city marketing. First of all, I will tell you something about uh, our company, what we do, how we are standing in, in the Amsterdam place, branding system, uh, what our core values, target groups, things like that. So that's more the marketing story. Um, and then I want to focus with you a bit more on uh, a project which we did two years ago, uh, which was a festive year, like you have actually this year in, in Singapore um, with the 50 celebration. We had a, in 2013, we had a big festive year with all kinds of anniversaries and openings. I will tell you something about that. But there we made an interesting case and that is, I think, I strongly believe that was one of the turning points for Amsterdam to believe very strongly in culture and heritage as an economic incubator for a city. Um, and I think the last critical persons in Amsterdam who thought our museums, our heritage are now gone. So we are a city of believers in, um, in culture, which is nice. Um, when I started this job uh, for almost four years ago, um, the first thing I thought, let's look how Amsterdam is visualized on YouTube. Um, what do people like you, when you want to go to Amsterdam, what do you see? So you go on YouTube and you sort of look at videos. And then I made a sort of um, very disappointing um, conclusion. I thought, okay, um, this is what Amsterdam people do. They sit on a terrace. And they drink Heineken beer. Um, and then they're going to ride on their bike. And then they are on in a boat. And then they look at the Van Gogh painting. And that is kind of the things we do. So nobody worked on YouTube in Amsterdam. Nobody studied. Nobody did research. Nobody did anything. Everybody was sitting on the terrace and drinking beer. Um, so I thought, um, and, it would, it's, and it's not true, I can tell you. Um, so I thought, let's, let's start uh, my new job with commissioning a film um, or a clip which gives you actually a more comprehensive uh, story about uh, about Amsterdam now. So this um, gives you, a, I hope, a different image of Amsterdam. Um, 
And it's also, of course, because our brand works very well. Um, and I will tell you something about that later. Um, and there are, I hope you can see now there's something else going on in Amsterdam, that not everybody's sitting on the terrace drinking beer the whole time, but that there are people working, there are people uh, 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 enjoying themselves, but working, doing research, uh, teaching. And maybe, if you don't know Amsterdam very well, but it's interesting for us that suddenly the Dutch people say, ha, but Amsterdam has a beach, suddenly. And there are tulips, and there are windmills, uh, but this is about Amsterdam. And this has to do with our place branding. I will tell you something about it later. Um, first of all, who are we? Um, we are Amstel Marketing. We are the city marketing company of Amsterdam. And um, this is what we do. These are all our departments. Um, we do brand management. Um, Ellen already told something about I Amsterdam. It's um, now 12 years old already. Um, it's very popular. It's the number three city brand in the world, and it's everywhere. Actually, there is a pub here in Singapore, I am, and um, they've stolen our identity. <laughs> I s they have their own Facebook page, and they used our photographs of my office in the pub. So tomorrow morning, I have, I'm very looking forward to going to there tomorrow afternoon and present my business card. <laughs> and saying, okay, my lawyer will be here next week. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, it, uh, honestly, it's a big compliment. It's a big compliment to our brand that the guy, because we wrote, um, the, 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 uh, during the lunch, we wrote, um, we, we read on, 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 on his Facebook page how he did that. And he was inspired. He went to Amsterdam and he was so enthusiastic about our brand, he took it back to Singapore and decided to illegally make this whole pub around it. Uh, but it's nice because it's really a complement of our brand. So the brand management is very important. We do consumer marketing. I will tell you something about that later. We do business to business marketing. So we do consumer and we do business marketing. We are doing a lot of press. We service around 2,000 press, 2,000 journalists a year, um, which is very important. Um, when you talk about city marketing, but also when you talk about museum marketing, it's about the customer journey. It, it has to be, it is a, 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 a customer makes a journey. He has to have awareness of you. Then he will consider you. Then he will buy you. And then he will visit you. And then you have to get him back. But the first thing in this whole process, this awareness when I am here is reached by press. And press is very, very important because press is very efficient. Because it doesn't cost a lot of money and you get whole pages back. So when you benchmark it, the benchmark it with advertisement, which is so expensive, and you get a whole page in the Financial Times for nothing. Um, it's so important. So we do a lot of things with press. Uh, we publish three magazines. Uh, of course, the most important thing these days is online, uh, which costs you a lot of people. It doesn't cost a lot of money in material things, but it costs, it costs you a lot of people. We have, s I think now, 18 people working on online because it's kept growing and growing and growing, and we know that everybody's watching online, getting their information. So forget about brochures and all these old-fashioned things. It's, it's about online. And really, in city marketing, but also in cultural marketing, everything is about online marketing. We have uh, three visitor centers, where we service 1.3 million visitors a year, giving information, a huge research uh, department, and a sales department. So this, this is who we are, um, but this is who we were. And this is very typical for lots of cities. Um, you had all kinds of organizations doing different kind of things in city marketing. So you had one to attract businesses, you had one for tourism, one for congresses or conventions, you had culture marketing, you had branding. And um, it's nice in a way and this is also the result of a history and of a journey. Um, but I, as I always um, say, uh, when we started with this whole merging, because we merged all these uh, foundations into one new foundation three years ago, um, I, w I always say everybody was singing a very nice song about Amsterdam, but it was not the same song. And we are the new songwriters. So we write the songs, 
um, and which everybody has to use. So the marketing is much more concentrated. This sounds very easy, but we had to fight, I think for, I had to fight for now, one and a half year, two years with directors, boards of trustees, I don't know. But in the end, everybody was fired and I was the left one that was left off. <laughs> no, that's not true. But, um, but it was very important to concentrate all the marketing because it doesn't make any difference if you sell your city uh, for a museum or a new mall or a new business, you always have to sing the song about your city. And when you have different song, songs about your city, it's for the consumer, it's very strange. But what's the right song here? What's the right profile? I get so much different kind of information. I need to have one profile. So that's what we did. Um, so we merged the four ones in this new Amsterdam marketing organization. The business guys are still uh, trying to get new business to Amsterdam, but we are doing the marketing for them. So we're doing the, the, the business proposal. The Amsterdam Economic Board, they talk about Amsterdam in 20 years. So they talk about investment and, and development. So we have some relationship with them. Um, the goals we have in Amsterdam, or for Amsterdam marketing, are we want to be in the top five of Europe. Not the top five of the world, but the top five in, in Europe on, on different fields, which also actually re reflects the things we are doing. Uh, first of all, we want to be an international city for business. We are now number four in Europe. And what is an international city for business? We try to be a city where European headquarters will come from um, companies from Singapore, companies from China, from India, from America, from South America. They're looking for a European head office and they're looking for different options. Can I, shall I go to Barcelona? Shall I go to Zurich? Shall I go to Amsterdam? And why are we going to Amsterdam? And we are doing the marketing. We are writing the song to get people to Amsterdam. It's very interesting. Um, an appealing city to live in. Very, very important. If you get a city which is only interested, interesting for companies or visitors and there are no people anymore, then you have a problem. Because companies, expats, visitors, they come to Amsterdam or to another city because they also find it nice that there are people living there, people working there. So you have to, when you're talking about city marketing, you always have to take it in account that you have to give attention to the people who live here. Um, this is of course very important. Unique city for tourists. Why am I coming to Amsterdam? And this everything to do with our cultural profile. Why I'm going to Amsterdam? Why I'm not going to Berlin? Why I'm not going to Vienna? Why Amsterdam? Um, and conventions and congresses are very, very important. They give a lot of money. They bring a lot of money. They are people who earn a lot of money, but they spend a lot of money in Amsterdam. So that, that's very important. So these are the things we find very, very important. Um, our strategy are is various. Um, first of all, I think city marketing is a public-private thing. It's not a thing from the government and it's not a thing from the city. Um, because then it becomes too political. And I know it's not the case in lots of cities, uh, but I strongly believe in, in this model. Um, in Amsterdam we are funded by the government, by Amsterdam, by the city, by, for one-third and two-thirds comes from 1,200 partners. And these companies, institutions, they pay us a fee, uh, and together, that's my income. And the, who are these partners? Partners are the Rijksmuseum, the National Theatre Company, the Opera, uh, the Hilton Hotel, the airport, KLM Airlines, a bank, all big, small, cultural, non-cultural, but together, they are forming, um, you could say, the, 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 the infrastructure, the DNA of Amsterdam. And it is very important. And why I strongly believe in this partnership is that when you involve your stakeholders, um, you make them part of the problem or your challenge. And so you also can celebrate the solution together. So it's not when the government says, now we are going to do this. No, we are going to do this together. 
because it's all for our benefit and it's in our importance. So I, I very strongly believe, and this is, by the way, it's, it's very much in the tradition also of, uh, of Amsterdam to do this. Um, I am not responsible for uh, the garbage in Amsterdam. I'm not responsible for the taxis, thank God, in Amsterdam. Um, I'm not responsible for safety in Amsterdam. But um, we do a lot of research, and there we can see what people find irritating in Amsterdam. Visitors say, okay, I don't like this. And then we can say to the city, listen, uh, our research proves that you really, really, really have to invest now in something like, for instance, the biggest irritator of Amsterdam foreign visitors is our public transport system, which is wonderful we have a really good public transport system only it's totally inaccessible because, because the ticket sales are so complicated that i even find it very very difficult um, so visitors who come from abroad in amsterdam sort of think okay and how many companies are here and how many different tickets are there so we we, we learned about this and said to the city and to the public uh, to the transport uh, companies you really have to do something because this is getting out of the hand which helped one simple product um, so simple example when you arrive on Amsterdam you can you can go with the train to Amsterdam Central Station which is wonderful it's easy it's only 10 minutes um, but on the, all the, all the uh, uh, announcements on Schiphol Airport, it said Amsterdam CS, which is the abbreviation for us for Central Station. And everybody thought, all the visitors thought, what is CS? We don't get that. So we said to the, to the railway, change it, say Central Station. And now, luckily, after two years, they <laughs> changed it. We have a very long, slow railway, but they change it. So I, we see that as our function. Um, Amsterdam is a very small village. We are 800,000 people. We are 800,000 people living in Amsterdam and we have 861,000 bikes. So there are more bikes than people in Amsterdam. Um, which gives, a, we, have a really, we have a parking problem with bikes. It's really unique, but we have, do have a parking problem with bikes. Um, so we have a very small city and we have a very small 17th century central city. Who, who went to Amsterdam here? Can I see some hands? Okay, oh, that's really good. So you know the 17th century canals and, and the city which was built when there were no cars and no bikes and no scooters. So this is a 17th century infrastructure city. Um, and we are very popular in Europe. Um, so there are a lot of people coming to Amsterdam. And we're very small, so it's, it feels very crowded and very cramped. So we try to get people out of the city. Uh, not permanently, but they have to go longer out of the city. And that's why we thought, well, we, we are in a metropolitan area of 2.3 million people. And it's only 10 minutes to the beach. So let's try to use that. I will show you something later about that. Um, so the metropolis actually um, makes our product complete. Now, I told you about the branding of the motto I Amsterdam. Uh, we have three lawyers, We're <laughs> not in my office, but we hire three lawyers to work constantly on people like here in Singapore or misusing the brand. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> he actually did very well because he didn't use I Amsterdam, only I am, so I can't sue him now anymore. Um, now, I'm looking forward so much to go there tomorrow morning. Um, and I'm like, I have all kinds of gifts for him. So, uh, the I am Sam Umbrella. No. So, um, but it's important. And we are very strict on it. Because the, only a brand survives if you're very, very, very strict on it. Everybody wants to use it, which is nice. It's a compliment. But we're very strict on it. We have the letters. We have uh, the real-time 3D letters standing in behind the Rijksmuseum. They are photographed 9,000 times a day. So they are becoming the icon of Amsterdam. So that's why you have to be very strict in protecting your brand. And we're focusing on icons. Like every city, um, you have so many things, small things, big things, uh, and everybody thinks um, they are so interesting um, and they are really the latest news in the world. And I'm talking about museums, I'm talking about theaters, and I'm talking about all the things you can offer in a city. But you have to make a choice. And especially when you've marketed 
outside your own country. You have to focus on icons. The Rijksmuseum is a very good example because everybody knows the Rijksmuseum. Everybody knows the Van Gogh Museum. Everybody knows Anne Frank. Everybody knows Heineken. So you really have to focus on these icons because if you focus on smaller things, it won't work outside your own country. So that is very, very important. But on the other hand, you have to tell the icons you have a responsibility. You're the biggest museum in the class, but you have an obligation to take your smaller sisters and brothers with you. Because they don't have the money, they don't have the marketing, don't, they don't have the people, they don't have the experience to do what you do. So take them along and don't be selfish. Um, which works, I have to say. And of course we have core values. The, um, our brand has three core values. Creativity, innovation and spirit of commerce, which sometimes we use. These are our target audiences. I told you about the international enterprises. Uh, these are the people who decide, okay, I'm going to Zurich or I'm going to Barcelona. Very important. Visitors. Maybe you have noticed that I don't use the word tourists in my speech. Uh, because I officially have forbidden the use of word of tourists in our company. Because tourists has always something wrong. They're noisy or they're cheap or... They're and I thought it's stupid. Everybody is a visitor. And I don't care if somebody comes from Paris, Rotterdam, Singapore, Beijing, Rio de Janeiro. They're all our visitors. They are different visitors. Because every visitor has another story. It's very different if you are from Paris and you're for the 50th time, 50th time in Amsterdam, then you are a different visitor than when you're from Beijing and you are doing Europe in seven days. So then you have other needs in the city. So it's, I always tell this to cultural institutions, who is waiting for you? Who is waiting? And then, then lots of cultural institutions will say, oh, who's your target group? Everybody. So everybody is nobody. There is no everybody because then it's a nobody. For instance, we know from Chinese visitors, which is a, a growing group, people from China coming to Europe, they, are the, they only have eight hours in the Netherlands and they are not interested in art. They don't like paintings. They want to see Holland as they know from the school books. Mills, cheese, tulips, wooden shoes. <laughs> well, now, well, you can laugh, but it's logic. And the problem is, we don't, I don't walk on wooden shoes and we, I don't have a mill in my garden. <laughs> so, but I will tell you later, we have found a solution in that. But you have to understand this visitor. And then you have to understand the visitor from Rotterdam coming with his five friends only to see an exhibition. Or, so there is no visitor, one visitor. You have people who are coming for a convention or for a business appointment, which is also a leisure visitor because when the business visitor is finished at five o'clock, he becomes a leisure visitor. And then may he come, maybe he will go to an evening opening of the museum. He will go to a restaurant. So it's so important to think who is your target group. And of course, the last one are the most important ones. Because if these people hate the other two, uh, then you're gone. Then you're gone. And um, I have to tell you, we call it, uh, uh, there's a big discussion in Amsterdam now, but not only in Amsterdam, also in Barcelona, there's a discussion in, 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 in Berlin, in Bruges, in, in uh, Venice, about the balance. How many tourists can a city get? How many visitors can a, can a city get? Because at some times, inhabitants will think, okay, I have been taken over. There is no space for me anymore. I'm going away. And I will rent out my whole house to Airbnb, <laughs> uh, which happens, and then you get a dead city. So it's a very, very, it's the biggest threat for city marketing. It's the, and so when people, when cities say, I'm focusing on more and more and more, I always say, don't, don't forget to take along your inhabitants they, because they will, will be turned against you at some times. And you see it on the streets. Uh, I told you we are very cramped inner city. All the uh, uh, visitors from abroad like to bike, um, but they are not much experienced in biking. 
So you get very dangerous situations on the streets and people from Amsterdam get very, because you're on your way, you're in a hurry to go to your work or to drop your child at school and then go to work and then you're blocked by 20,000 Italian bikers for the first time in their life biking. So, uh, which is cute in a way, but it's also annoying when you're too late for your work. So this balance discussion, and it's a very, very serious discussion, and I don't, I don't think if there, I don't know if there is a solution. What we know is that tourism will grow twice the coming 15 years. There are twice as much people in the world starting to travel. Think about new economies, think about India, think about Mexico, think about Brazil. They're all going to travel. So it, the problem doesn't go away, so you have to find a solution. It's an important thing. Well, this is, the, this is of course the target uh, groups, and now we have another group from Mexico and India and uh, South Korea. I think we have a film telling you something about our company. Okay, money. Um, Interesting, you see the, the 4.2 million of the city of Amsterdam. I told you, and the rest is from other, from other uh, stakeholders, from, from consumers. So the city is very, very important. It's our biggest sponsor, but the other ones are important too, and this is how we spend it. You say, oh, that's a lot of people on staff. That's because of this online development. Online is people. So you need lots and lots of people for your Facebook account. Um, that's why we have so much staff. Um, and this is how we divide it. It's not so interesting, but you can see we have a relationship for these 1,200 parties. We do marketing, of course, and the hospitality is all these visitor centers. You can't do it alone. Um, so we have advisory boards. And we really thought, okay, we need some advice from all our stakeholders. So these are all our advisory boards. And it sounds, it, it looks more uh, horrible than it is. <laughs> because every the advisory board is only four people. And we meet once in the three months in a restaurant or in a pub, drink a cup of coffee uh, or a Heineken, um, and we talk. Okay, what's bothering you? What's bothering me? Can you help me? Can I help you? So it's very informal, but very important. But there are no minutes, it's not official, but there are our advisory boards. And so we can talk with the shop people, okay, do you see any problems in developing the opening times, blah, blah, blah? Uh, we have inhabitants. How are you dealing now with the tourism pressure? Um, what about transport? What about hotels? What about hospitality? It's very, very interesting to, to talk with these people because they are from the, um, you could say, in the war, from the trenches. They know what's going on in the city. I'm sitting in my office, but they are there. Um, seeing sometimes the, 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 the results of something we uh, did in, in the marketing uh, uh, department. So it's very, very important. These three words we are, think are very important. Making connections in Amsterdam. So seeing all the, different, all the different offerings and try to make, sometimes you can say, one pearl, string of pearls and then package it. I strongly believe in packaging. Uh, strengthening, so as I say, the big guys go first, smaller guys go with the big guy. Um, and choosing. Choosing is so important, you have to choose who you are, which means, and this is also, this is for every institution, it's also for a museum, also for a theater, who are you, once, what do you want to be? What is your story? Um, and if you choose a direction, you're also choosing the directions you don't go, which is very important and gets a lot of aggressive reactions because then people are disappointed and mad and angry that you don't, didn't choose them. And then you have to explain why you didn't choose them. So that's very important. So you have to make reasons why you, why you make selections. And this is the selection we made. Um, it's about quality. It has to have quality. In, 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 in design or anything, in professional thing, it has to have quality. It has to make a difference. It's not the same as the rest. And it has to have an Amsterdam DNA. It has to be only for Amsterdam. And when you have these three things, you can say, okay, that's why I'm choosing you. For instance, I had the people of Madame Tussauds and say, why, why, why I'm not in your window? Because sometimes I call ourselves the window dressers of Amsterdam. And I said, well, of course, we have 800,000 people in Madame Tussauds in Amsterdam. So, well, wonderful. Um, how many Madame Tussauds you have in the world? 45. 
I'm saying, that's why you're not in my window. Because Madame Tussauds is like Starbucks. It comes with the growth of a city. So it's not unique for Amsterdam. It's wonderful, it's great, but you're not going to be in, I don't make a difference with Madame Tussauds. I make a difference with Van Gogh Museum. Um, and that's hard for them. But I invited them to spend lots of advertising money in our magazine, so that went very well. Um, of course, we always have a, that's why we are tradesmen, the Dutch, we always have a money option. Um, this is the Amsterdam region. Amsterdam is uh, here, here in the middle, you can't read it. And these are 17 small villages around Amsterdam. Um, and four years ago, with, with well, my predecessor thought, we have to get more people into the, into the metropole in, outside Amsterdam. But then first we have to teach all these people how to welcome visitors. So you have, do you have an English website? Do you have signing? How's your hospitality? So they invented 17 characters. And when I came three years ago, I thought, well, this is for a marketing campaign. I can't tell this in Singapore or in Beijing about this thing. So we laid a layer above it. So for instance, we have five small villages on the beach and they all have their own mayor and their own um, people saying we are very, very important. And I said, well, that's very true, but uh, you are now called this. Of course, I explained it a bit more than now, but uh, I said, listen, this is going to be very profitable for you. Because now everybody thinks when something is called Amsterdam Beach, it, then it's close by. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not going to talk about all these small villages. It's not interesting. The interesting thing, it's only 10 minutes by train. That's the interesting thing. Um, and they said, oh, okay, no, no, it sounds old Holland. This is the whole cheese, wooden shoes, mills thing going on. <laughs> It's great, it's just nearby us. We have the whole product of Holland in the neighborhood of Amsterdam. How great is that? Haarlem is a, well, Ellen knows Haarlem. It's the ele more elegant, uh, uh, quieter version of Amsterdam, you could say. Um, the flowers of Amsterdam, huh, all the bulb fields, that's nice, only half an hour with the bus. Um, and you know, here, when you're in London or in Shanghai or in Paris, you go into the subway, you go a half hour, where you go upstairs, and then you're still in the city. Here, you're in the flower fields or in, in people on wooden shoes or on the beach, which is great. It's a great USP for, for our marketing. The new land, which is all about modern architecture. And these are things we didn't have. All these things are things you can't find in Amsterdam. So we're not talking about, it's a beautiful museum, but we're not talking about the Frans Hals Museum in Haarlem, because we have enough museums in Amsterdam. So a visitor goes out of the city to find something which is not in the city. So we don't have a castle, we don't have uh, forests, we don't have flower fields, we don't have a beach, we don't have windmills, and we don't have so much contemporary architecture. So we found actually things to enlarge our city, and it is a I can say we did it now for two years and it's a big success. Um, something about our company to finish off this.
So this is um, something about Amsterdam marketing, um, but um, let me focus more now on on um, on, on, on culture. And um, I pre I present a case study, Amsterdam 2013. Um, when I started my job in 2011, um, I was called to the my mayor and the vice mayor, and they said, "Listen, we have this interesting thing going on. We have 2013, and everybody has a birthday." The Royal Concertgebouw Orchestra, the Concertgebouw, the Zoo, the Van Gogh Museum, the Frans Hals Museum, everybody has a birthday. And to top it off, totally unexpected, the Rijksmuseum will open in 2013. Because everybody was waiting, Ellen knows that everybody's waiting so long. And now, oh, it opens in 2013. So suddenly we had this golden opportunity um, to sort of refocus Amsterdam and the Amsterdam product on culture because, we, of course, you need these huge uh, icons. Um, it is important to, 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 to share with you this. Um, this is what people do in Amsterdam. Um, and this is, not, this is not asked before, but this is during their visits. And when they are in Amsterdam, 85% of the people go to a museum, which is astonishingly high. Of course, you thought that 85% was going to a coffee shop. <laughs> um, but that they don't say it because they all forgot that. But 64% um, is viewing architecture from the 17th and 18th century. And what I found very astonishing is 25% is doing architecture after 1940. So this is wonderful. So already, the people who come to Amsterdam have a cultural profile. They come to Amsterdam because they know there are a lot of museums and they want to go to see the heritage, and the heritage then very much focused on the canals. And the canals play a very important aspect in this whole celebration year because um, the, canal, the canal ring became a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And then we discovered that in um, 1613, um, it was decided to build this ring, which is one of the most gr largest city enlargements, I think, from, from, from history. The city was almost three doubled in size with this project. So in 1613, four mayors of Amsterdam decided to grant funds to start this project. So we thought, okay, that's a nice celebration. And then with all the other things, we have, suddenly we have a party. We have all these party things going on. So let's use these cultural icons for business. Let's use it for economic development. Let's use it for expat events. And let's use it, very important, to get inhabitants of Amsterdam proud of their world players. Um, as cultural icons, so that was the that was the starting point. Um, so um, again, um, we focused, and that's also, uh, of course, there were a lot of things going on. But again, we make we made a choice. I, I, thought, I thought we can't put anything in everything in the window. We make a selection of the biggest things we think will play an international role. Lots of people again angry, disappointed. But we said, no, we are the marketeers. We are making the choices here. So, and we think these players are the international players. So we're going to work with them. It's 2013. The year we celebrate 400 years of canals that run through the city like vital veins. Always vibrant and full of life with thousands of boats and 1,281 bridges. It's the year we mark 225 years of Felix Meritus. Connecting cultures and ideas. A salute to free thinkers and free Wi-Fi. To early morning bike rides and the thousands of first kisses. In 2013, we celebrate 125 years of the Concertgebouw, its magnificent royal orchestra and the buzz of the city. The perfect soundtrack to life. It's 175 years of Artist Royal Zoo and all the party animals that own Amsterdam. 
when we toast Dutch-Russian friendship, the Hermitage, and friendship in general. It's the year we praise 100 years of the Franz Hals Museum and 40 years of the Van Gogh Museum. Our homage to old masters in the Rijksmuseum and new masters yet to be discovered. It's the year we celebrate our city's unique blend of art, history, beauty, and freedom. It's Amsterdam. Come celebrate. Um, so this was interesting because there are a few things here. First of all, I will talk about you. This is not done by ourselves, but also with sponsors. But you can see it's about culture. It's about culture, it's about culture, it's about culture. And it's about the DNA of a city and it makes connections with freedom, with friendship. And what I th think is important, it makes friendship, uh, of with, it makes connections with contemporary aspects. So of course, the old masters in the Rijksmuseum are very important, but we also have contemporary students at the academies working like Rembrandt did. So I was very happy that we could make the connection with, with contemporary Amsterdam. Um, so w when we started this whole thing, um, we had this was the goal, to put Amsterdam, the metropolitan area, on the map, nationally and internationally. And then you would say, okay, well, Amsterdam was on the map already. Yes, but on the wrong map. <laughs> um, we were going down, in the, especially in the, in the beginning of the 90s of the last century, we were going down all the ratings. And Amsterdam became a sex, drugs, and rock and roll sleaze town, um, which is in the beginning nice when you celebrate freedom because that was the beginning of it in the 70s and the hippies and the things that's sort of innocent nice but when it becomes criminal and when it becomes about uh, uh, a women trade and then uh, you and it is about drunken people and then it's a different story and we saw that it was blocking the image of Amsterdam Amsterdam became a stack party bachelor drinking destination, cheap flights, cheap hotels, cheap restaurants, and we thought, well, it's not good for an image. We're not making any money out of these people. <laughs> Very important. So, um, and we have all these museums opening. We have, well, we, the city of Amsterdam and the national government have invested one billion euro in new museums in Amsterdam. We should do something with this. And that's why um, we said, okay, this is the goal. So to you could say to put Amsterdam again on the map, but then on another map, nationally and internationally. Um, three things, connecting. So we said, okay, there is so much going on, but we are going to make the choice. We are going to make the connections. We are going to make the packages. Uh, again, strengthening. Again, saying to the big wigs, okay, you're the big wig. Uh, that's because you're a big museum, um, or you're a big theater, or a big orchestra but you have the obligation to do things for the people of Amsterdam and to do things for your smaller brothers and sisters. And uh, again, making it complete. Choosing, so we, we saw the whole, you could say the whole panorama of offering, and then we thought as a company, okay, there's something missing. There, are, there were a few things missing there. We thought there was not enough to do for the people of Amsterdam themselves, and we thought there's not enough to do for uh, contemporary artists. So we invented two, two, two projects. Um, and we did it with culture, most important of all, with culture, but also with sports. Very important, especially for the people of Amsterdam, to celebrate your city, to have in-city sports, and of course youth, to do it, all these things with culture, all these things always there for also for children, for school groups, always involve these, these very important target group. Um, and we very specifically said this is not a tourist campaign because the people of Amsterdam said, oh, all this money, first why all this money goes to Amsterdam marketing um, for the people and it's already so busy. Then he said, no, this has to do with also with you. You can enjoy new cultural offerings, you can enjoy new, pro new things in Amsterdam. There are free open air concerts, every, all these things you can enjoy. Um, and of course it was for visitors, national visitors, international visitors, and it was for companies. Because we use culture to attract new companies. And that's a mistake a lot of people make. They think culture is for culture people. But people, businesses who come to a city and say, okay, I'm going to put my head office here. And for instance, 
when we talk to head offices, uh, new head offices in Amsterdam, say, no, but I'm, I'm here because you have the Rijksmuseum here, you have the Van Gogh Museum, you have the Concertgebouw Orchestra, you have this fabulous cultural infrastructure. That's the reason I am here. Of course, I'm here for tax and for Schiphol Airport and for the port of Rotterdam. But the cultural infrastructure is one of the big reasons my people want to f live here. So don't forget how important culture can be for econom as an economic incubator. When we have huge conventions in Amsterdam, 60,000 people, they have a party. Where they have a party in the evening? At the Rijksmuseum, Van Gogh Museum, Maritime Museum, the Film Museum. And we get these uh, conventions because they can say, hey, you can have a party at the museum, isn't that fabulous? Uh, and Vienna is not offering you this, isn't it? No, and we are offering you this. So uh, come to us. And that's why we use culture to get the convention in. And we give all the people from the convention a free pass to the museums. And so they all go in the weekend when they stay. So it's nonsense that there are two different things, tourism and, and economic things and culture. They use each other and they, they have to use each other. Um, and we do this um, with sustainable effect which is very important. And sustainable is not, um, in this case, green or biologic or, or organic. It's, it has to stay. So we no, are not inventing things uh, which is only for one year. It has to come back the next year and has to come back. We are investing in the marketing of the city. Um, of course, it has to have, what's the return? Huh? The, the city gave us extra money. So what's the return of investments? Do I get more, does the city get money back? Are there more people coming to museums? Are there more people coming to hotels? And are, is everybody joining in in the city? Young, old, foreigners, Dutch people, is everybody joining in the celebrations? Um, the budget. We got an extra money of 3.6 million euros, which was great. Um, 2.6 million was for marketing, and 1 million was for extra programming. We went to KLM and said, listen, this is a wonderful year. You have to give us free tickets for press. Well, I'm, the, the sentence was a bit longer for me, but um, they said yes, in the end, <laughs> um, which is great. So now we had an aviation partner with a huge PR machine behind it. And then I went to the hotels and said, okay, now you have to give me, I have KLM already there, so now you have to give me hotels, rooms. And they did, the luxury hotel group. So now we had the basement to fly in lots and lots of journalists from all over the world for one year, and we did. Then the city said, well, okay, I'm Frans van Avert, I'm not giving you this money directly. Not because they didn't trust me, but they said, we want to have a foundation. There's a foundation in between, a foundation Amsterdam 2013. Nobody was working for that uh, foundation. It was a trustee, a board of trustees, which was very important in this board. There was a museum person, a hotel person, a tour operator person, a person from Haarlem. So everybody was there as a stakeholder. And they, they, these were, you could say, my board of trustees. And they gave me the, the, the money for project management and for marketing. So I think it was very smart of the city uh, to put a board between me and, and, and the money of the city uh, because it became independent. The money became more independent and it became more effective in the, you didn't have to go through all the city hall things, but you, had, you could talk with the president of the board of trustees and then you could arrange it, which I think was much better. So th this was actually the whole foundation and then um, I was a bit worried so can I tell you now start and tell you everything which happened um, which was but um, I hope you don't mind but, but we made a video uh, which takes you through the whole year it's it's not a video for the public it's a video for our which we made for our stakeholders from this is what we did this is what it, it resulted in so um, I wanted to show you this because it's, it summarizes the whole idea of, of culture in, in, in city marketing and how effective it can be.
So um, you see what happens, what the economic results are when you invest in culture. Um, and of course you have to have a city who believes in that and you have to have a city who pays you extra money to do this. Um, but it's worthwhile because when you see, when you put culture in the heart of your proposition, um, it will lead to 15% more uh, museum visits. And then you would say, okay, that's nice for that museum. But remember, a person who goes to a museum also goes after that shopping and after that to a bar or to a restaurant. So museum people make money for the city. Cultural visitors make money. And that's something that has to go in between the ears of people working, for instance, in classical tourism. Um, but it makes money, and I know people from tourism are interested in what makes money, what culture makes money. That this is the proof of that. And it's also the Guggenheim in Bilbao, it's the, the Louvre uh, at, in Paris, it's all the new museum projects in the world. Culture is an incubator for city marketing. Not only for museum visits, but you saw also how many much more hotel stays. This was, a, this was a video we produced in December 2013, so we did only have the figures, but in the end it was 12%, 12% more hotel overnight stays. And what I think is much more interesting it is that it, it became a new brand of Amsterdam. Uh, because we did this not only to get results in 2013, but we saw it as a long-term thing. Okay, we're going to invest in culture, and this will pay off in 2014, in 2015, in 16, in 17. Because there's not a person um, in Madrid reading something in the newspaper about the new Rex Museum and said, okay, let's go tomorrow. If the next time, maybe I will go next year, and I will go to see the new Rex Museum. Which happened. Because when you look at the results, when we see the hotel rising overnight stays in 2014, it's even higher, 14% higher than 2013. So this whole investment in a cultural profile really, really paid off. And it made um, everybody uh, very much aware of the power of culture and museums or cultural infrastructure of city. Not only for the visitors, not only for the people who live there, but also as a, a magnetic part of your city branding for new, uh, new business. So um, we decided to go on with that. So we thought, okay, now we have found the cultural beginning and let's start and doing it again and again and again. So this is the campaign we launched last year. Um, creative and open-minded. Uh, this is about, um, which is a very special thing, but in the 60s, 70s, Amsterdam was the center of the world of the Provo hippie movement. Everybody, knew John Lennon and Yoko Ono were lying in a bed in the Hilton Hotel and everybody knew that Amsterdam was sort of the free town. And actually we still are that. So the creativity and the open-mindedness of that time is still one of the DNAs of Amsterdam, also in museums and also in great genius, artistic geniuses. So we thought, okay, this whole thing, this freedom, open mind thing is a very good theme to also to again focus on culture, uh, like the Rembrandt exhibition at the, at the Rijksmuseum, the late Rembrandt exhibition, which is now in its final weeks with already almost 400,000 visitors, new visitors, which is great. Um, also a creative and open-minded spirit, you could say. Um, next door is this exhibition, the Matisse exhibition, big show, lots of people go there. And uh, end of this year, we have the, in September, we have the opening of the new entrance of the Van Gogh Museum with a big show of Van Gogh and Munch. And it's not that we only do big exhibitions, but we have now seen the value of arts and seen the value, and we are very lucky to have these household names in Amsterdam. And now when I show you the next film, you can see, uh, that's the clip of 2015, you can see how important culture plays in our city marketing uh, uh, profile. <laughs>
we, we have you, we have started a movement, you could say, uh, three year two years ago. Uh, but the movement goes both ways. It's not only that we see what's happening, but it's also now that all the museums and the theaters know, okay, um, uh, this this whole group there of Amsterdam marketing is thinking very much about the culture and seeing it as an incubator. Um, so we are very important and I, I always tell them, but then you have to also professionally play along with me. And some companies are so professional. Um, the Rijksmuseum, um, uh, I told them that I was going to Singapore. I said, oh, we have, we have a wonderful show. We have a wonderful show, we have a wonderful show uh, about Asia. I said, well, I can't tell. And they said, no, we will make a clip for you. We will make a clip for you and you can show it in Singapore. You see, we train each other very well. Uh, and I think it's very important because we, we do these things together and we are dependent uh, on, 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 the, on, on the quality of what's offered to us by the museums because we don't do programming. We, we did this in 2013, but we don't do programming anymore. This was only for that special year. So we are fully dependent on what the museums are inventing. Um, and they and we do this together. I, I just did a whole press trip roadshow in Europe in November, December, with the Rijksmuseum and the Van Gogh Museum, and we talked about Amsterdam, we talked about the late Rembrandt, and we talked about the Van Gogh Museum, and we do it with us together. We pay this together with the three of us. So um, from the museum side and the culture side, they see the importance of being professional. Uh, outside the border of Amsterdam and to attract foreign visitors and um, and we see uh, and they know that we see them again as a very very important uh, part in our city marketing it's not only about museums it's also about young designers it's about design shops it's about new chefs good restaurants quality food <coughs> but you uh, have as what I said in my introduction, you can talk about culture as a museum, but I think culture is a city. It's, it, culture is not only about museum. Culture is about food. Culture is about how people deal with each other. Culture is about how people move in a city. It's all about culture. And when you, what we do, try to pick out the new, innovative, creative parts of that. So talk about new museums, new exhibitions, talk about young chefs, smart shops, smart solutions for a city. Then you will get a profile. And again, um, in the end, um, in the end it's all, about, it's all about this. Because then you wake up and then somebody says, yes, 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 but what's in it for me? So, um, and then you have to have numbers. You have to have numbers because they can't. Be, I don't have blue eyes, but they, they all don't believe me on my green eyes too. So, this is important in the end. This is important. 6.3 billion turnover for our city. Um, this is important. Uh, this is important. Of course, our website. We have 13 million visitors on our website, which makes our website very important. Um, again. This shouldn't be the only thing. If you only are driven by money or by results or by economic turnover, um, more, 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 at the moment, at a certain moment, you are facing a problem. Because then you see that your inhabitants are getting turned against you. And then you will go down, 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 down. Because you become a tourist trap. And you don't want to be a tourist trap. I always think, for people who know Amsterdam, I'm always very happy <coughs> that on the Canal Ring in Amsterdam, where we have 5,000 monuments, people live there, uh, people work there, 
people study there, have a small shop, a small cafe, uh, there are lawyers, there are students, there are social housing. Um, and that is very important for the DNA, the social DNA of a city, that it's not only Airbnb or rich people with very, very, very glamorous apartments on the inner city. Because then the city loses its heart. Because the part of the city is, um, um, the structure of a city is woven by students, by expats, by shop owners, by young creatives who want to find a space to work in the inner city. So um, that's the thing we always say to our city of Amsterdam, to the government. And they are, luckily they're very aware of that. So in the end, um, um, th this, is, this is the story of Amsterdam. And this is the story of how important uh, um, culture uh, is in Amsterdam. So um, maybe you will read about tomorrow about my visit to the cafe here in uh, Singapore <laughs> in the newspaper. But um, thank you very much for the attention. I was happy to be here and thank you very much.